In the late 70s and the early 80s, I was part of a small group that was trying to start a computer museum here in Minnesota. Uh, it never did work out, but uh, in the process, I did manage to collect lots of early micros and computer-related artifacts. In fact, my garage, as you can see in these photos, was stacked to the ceiling with about 150 micros, and it included even we had three Apple Ones. Um, this particular one here sold in Germany a few years ago for 645000 This one sold in Italy before that for over $200,000. Um, I even had a very early Altair 8800. Uh, it was serial number 5 and it was factory assembled indicated by the A. But I think by far the most interesting and intriguing of all the computers I collected was this one. Uh, it was a one-of-a-kind 8-bit microcomputer system and it was built around the Intel SIM 801 done by um, Intel with their new 8008 microprocessor. I bought this uh, particular microcomputer system in, at a swap meet in 1980 in Minneapolis. And uh, the unit on the left is the PROM programming unit for burning EPROMs. Uh, the unit in the middle is called the SIM 8-01, which is the CPU or the microprocessor unit, the main portion of the computer and it used a teletype for input and output and the entire system was interfaced into a single unit so it was all controlled by the teletype. Now for the next 30 years because I didn't know who built it I just had it sit on my shelf and wondered who, why, and when it was built. And then about five years ago, I ran across a rather extensive research article done by Zbigniew Stochniak of York University. And he had been researching the SIM-8 computers done by Intel in preparation for a book he was writing. And uh, here's a little excerpt from, uh, from the article. Zbigniew referred to this particular system as a proto-PC. Uh, it was introduced in 1972 as a low-cost hardware aid for program development, and the SIM-8 was not just the first commercially available 8-bit microcomputer, but it became a blueprint for the design of the first generation of commercial and hobby general-purpose microcomputers. So, basically, this was the the forefather or the grandfather of all 8-bit micros and uh, kind of an interesting system. Uh, before I tell you about uh, who built it and why, let me show you a little bit of more detail about the system itself. Uh, it's constructed using a thick red translucent plastic and as you see you can see down inside the uh, the computer. Uh, this is the main CPU board. To get at the EPROMs, there is a uh, sliding plastic door in front, so you have easy access. Uh, let's flip it on here. Fan is starting up inside. There's the eight thousand eight. This is the PROM 
unit over here. What's kind of interesting with that, it has uh, light up LEDs uh, underneath the red plastic, so it's kind of a, a neat effect as it shows the uh, locations and, and the contents of various memory locations. Um, there the SIM-8 is connected to the PROM unit. Um, also, this is the RS-232 interface for the teletype right here. The unit is a deep red. In fact, it doesn't show up on this video very well. It almost looks lighter, but it's a very dark, shiny red plastic. Just gorgeous. I finally determined who built this computer by tracking down a name that was written on the back of one of the documents that came with the system. Um, it turns out that through an internet search that uh, the name belonged to an IT manager at a large company in Toledo, Ohio, and I wrote him a letter. And one day I got a call, and sure enough, he was the guy that I bought this computer system from at the swap meet in Minneapolis in 1980. So it turns out that this guy had been uh, a project engineer for Sperry Rand Univac in St. Paul and he had started there in 1976 and shortly after he started there they were remodeling the lab and display um, areas of the building he worked in and uh, a lot of the old equipment was being given away to employees. So he grabbed this one because he was part of the UNIVAC Computer Club and wanted to experiment with it and find out more about it until he eventually sold it at that swap meet where I bought it from him. Uh, so now we know UNIVAC built it, but why and who was still a question. So I contacted uh, a group called the UNIVAC VIP Club and this is a group of retirees in the Minneapolis-St. Paul area that worked at UNIVAC at various times and the gentleman I spoke to was there at that time and while he wasn't familiar with it he knew people that might be and so one clue or contact led to another and about three four contacts later I actually found one of the engineers that worked on the project and I spent uh, an af a morning and a part of an afternoon talking to him about the system and what he could remember. Here's some interview notes from various conversations with UNIVAC engineers that I had. Uh, in March of 1972 one of the engineers had just returned from active military service so he remembers the date quite well and he did programming on a completed MCS4 microcomputer system which was just like this one only used the Intel 4004 microchip. Uh, in April the lead engineer from the project was fairly certain that they ordered the uh, the SIM 8 and the corresponding uh, PROM programming board, the MP702, uh, from Intel. In the summer of 72, the construction would have taken place then for this computer. Uh, the one note, though, is that they did not reconstruct the PROM programmer. They used the, the one that was on the 4004 system already. And that's why there was a difference in the cases. In the fall of 72, uh, the one engineer that was on the project remembered that he was programming this 8-bit uh, system and showing it to various groups that included internal UNIVAC groups and military, in particular the Air Force and the Navy. Also in the fall of 72, they uh, 
started work on a magnetic tape cartridge controller using the 8008 to show an application of using this chip in other areas. And finally, uh, in late 1972, they upgraded the PROM programming board from the MP702 to the much faster MP703. And this is evidenced by the different EPROMs that are in this system. Notice that there's actually three different types in there. The one in the middle is a 1701, which was the earliest of all Intel EPROMs. Then the 1702, which was early 1972 and uh, chip. And then finally the 1702A, which was for the faster uh, PROM programming board that they put in later on. So all three of these chips were in the system. About a month ago, the uh, engineer that was on this project was cleaning out some files and he found a report that uh, was on this project that this computer was part of and he sent me a copy of it. The uh, report was dated March 31st, 1973 and uh, the name of the project was Complex Arrays. Uh, their department was known as the Internal R&D Solid State Technologies Group. Uh, the purpose of this particular project was to investigate recent developments in MOS integrated circuits called the microprocessor and in this report they commonly referred to it as the COC which was computer on a chip. Now in this particular report they talked about uh, they were monitoring all the activities currently uh, being done by various vendors and in particular Intel. And they also talked about building and studying the 4004 based computer system and then this 8008 based computer system. And then finally they wanted an application using the 8008 so they built and studied a magnetic tape cartridge controller uh, that was in late 1972 and very early 1973. So this project spanned from late 1971 and ended officially with the report in March of 1973. So the final question in my mind is how does the development of this particular uh, computer system compare with other early 8008 based computers that were uh, built. And so I researched quite a bit and found that there were uh, five other notable early systems that were uh, based on the 8008 uh, processor. And the first one that you read quite a bit about is a Sac State computer. This was developed by Bill Pence in California at Sacramento State College. I uh, just got an email back from Bill here a few weeks ago and he said he really couldn't remember specific dates as to when they had their system operational, but uh, they did a lot of that work in 1972 and in 1973 they had the system completed and enclosed in, 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 in the case and functional. Uh, another notable one is the Micro N in France by the R2E Corporation. Uh, they did start in 72 and there's, re there's reports that in January and February of, of 73 they actually had their system up and running and later that year began uh, distribution of it. Uh, the micro uh, computer machines computer developed in, in uh, Canada called the MCM70 is the one that Zbigniew Stachniak did extensive research on and wrote a book about. Uh, they started in uh, actually in May of 1972. Uh, the the guy de designing it 
was a close fr friend of Robert Nice's and went out to Intel and made arrangements to get one of the very first SIM 8 boards, hoping to use it with his system. But when he found out that it had a teletype um, interface for input-output, uh, that um, ended that idea and then they went on and rebuilt the system using their own uh, prototyping board. Uh, that I believe we had a functional prototype by the end of 72 and uh, continued developing it during 1973 and actually started selling it in 1974. Uh, also in 1974 we see two hobbyist machines that came on the market. Uh, the Mark 8 that John Titus designed and the Selby 8H that Nat uh, Wadsworth designed. And so there you have my Univac 8008 um, microcomputer system, uh, one of the very first 8-bit uh, microcomputers ever assembled. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, get a hold of me. Thanks.